What's up people? Welcome to our video series Cost of Building in Ghana. We have journeyed through episode 1 where we looked at the cost of land, the building plan and also episode 2 where we discussed the foundation, episode 3 where we looked at the external sewage system and then episode 4 where we looked at the ground floor block work and the first floor slab and then episode 5 where we looked at the first floor block work and then the second floor decking or slab and today in episode 6 we'll be looking at the second floor block work and then the last floor concrete slab which serves as the rooftop gardens decking and for our bonus discussion we will basically be dealing with tools and then also an overview of the channel so that said let's get straight into the details of the second floor now there was a question regarding why I always do the pillars first now I do the pillars first because my pillars are big and I'm trying to construct it more like a structure rather than having the blocks as load bearing walls but it's fine to do the block block work and then just put the nail the boards on the blocks and then cast it's cheaper and it's also in, it's cheaper in terms of materials you use fewer boards and also in terms of uh, labor cost and that's how many people do it so feel free to use that especially if it's not a commercial project so i already mentioned usually um, i pay a mason i pay a carpenter and his laborer 80 70 for the pillars and uh, they would usually do about six five to six a day so depending on the number you will know exactly how many days that they used if you are doing the block before this you don't need a laborer it's just a carpenter who just nail it on the on the block work another thing i need to point out is i actually you reduce the number of uh, iron rods in this at this on this floor to six instead of eight so until now we have been using uh, eight rods that's the ground in the first floor but this being the last floor it's also okay to use um, six of the iron rods instead of the eight that we've been using basically it's it was enough to carry both the life and then the dead loads that was associated with the floors above it so again we use 1.5 bags of cement for every pillar once that was through we went ahead with the block work like I indicated for this floor I got someone to mold the blocks so it's one bag of cement to, for 30 hollow blocks and then for each bag I was charged 15 Ghana CDs which is about 2.5 dollars but um, this week we we are actually going to mold some blocks for the two bedroom first floor block work so if my wife gets it time i will see if we can get a video of how it's done to show you but come to think of it i think she she's the one actually undertaking this project because i just give instructions but she goes to the she's the one implementing it calling the guys making sure they are the side ordering for material it's easier to give the instructions but i think the implement implementation is more difficult so good job my wife so with that said the carpentry comes in we paid four thousand ghana cities which is about a little over eight hundred dollars and i explained why how we got to that amount so you can check out episode 5 for details there was a question regarding why i don't use lentil for the windows and the doors for the windows i don't because i want bigger windows so my windows are five feet by five feet that comes with an additional cost when it comes to the glazing that's the windows but at least you have enough ventilation and again it was okay to do it this way because remember my beam was strong enough to hold on its own for that five feet span so that's the advantage when you do the structure if you do the load bearing and uh, your beams are not strong enough you may have to do the lintel to distribute the weight from underneath the beam for the doors i did 
a lento I did a, a lento only that I didn't do it the traditional way where it's like the beam lies on the block what I did was more of a cantilevered lento so the door has to be seven feet the space for the door has to be seven feet and the building was higher than that and i didn't want the fan light door kind of thing so i decided to drop a cantilevered beam so what they did was when they were tying the beam they made a longer stair up and put rods in there so that it will fill up up to where the seven feet actually reaches the the, the problem i found with this method is that if you don't make sure that the, there's a strong enough bracing when you pour in the concrete the beam there is going to bulge and uh, when you are plastering it's going to require additional work it happened to us fortunately i buy some basic tools when uh, anytime i'm going to ghana because i just like to have those tools for for convenience sake we basically had to grind part of the concrete off that had bulged, the concrete that had bulged with that so that we wouldn't have problems with the with the plastering otherwise you're going to have to use a lot of mortar and the, when you the mortar becomes too thick you may have end up having cracks in there so it was easy for them because of the tools i had they just had to use the angle grinder and then the, to cut through the level they want and then use the hammer drill to chisel it off so that is me helping them out usually when when the time i'm around i try to um, provide a little bit of support so in the mornings i spend about two hours um, helping them on some of the things it's easy because i was using machine plus it's a good way of making sure that that little pot belly doesn't escalate to higher levels of pot belly And then we went ahead with the steel bending. So again, every floor I add 100 CDs to the price per ton. So this being the second floor, I paid 700 per ton. And as you already know, we use five tons per floor of the three bedroom. So we paid 3,500 for the workmanship of the steel bending and then we did the the conduit for the electricals i've already touched on it that has been given as a contract for 2100 which captures which includes the wiring the chiseling and everything for each of the floors so usually i give them 500 because i know they are going to come back to finish the rest of the job and then plumbing again 250 cds now if you check the video you notice that the pipe has gone outside the beam that is the usefulness of having to get some of these videos you tend to correct some of these problems so the pipe was actually supposed to go into between the the iron rods so that it goes inside the beam so once the video was sent to me I was able to have that corrected i must say that almost all the videos that we are using now for this channel were not meant for youtube the idea of having this channel just came in last year somewhere in august or september so these were videos that were sent to me by my wife to usually check on um, progress of work and also make sure things are being done right and there's been multiple instances where I've had to make corrections based on some of the things that I, I see in the video. So with that out of the way, it was time for casting. So this floor, um, for the mixer, I think he was charging like 
400 CDs per day, which was about um, 80, 70 dollars thereabout. But um, I managed to get it for the two days at either 700 or 750, which is about 700 or 750 Ghana CDs, which should be about 120 to 130 dollars. Again, that's when negotiation comes in. You you let him know that you are renting it for two days, so he can't actually take the price for a day. And usually they would uh, be considerate. And by the way, you pay for the transportation of the mixer. It's different from the rental price. So the tra transportation depends on where your site location is from the rental location. Usually I pay about 100 um, Ghana CDs. Now I was looking for this video in the episode three with the external seaway system. I, I couldn't locate it, but since I have it, I just want to show it to you so that you have a fair idea how the concrete mixing that's the one is to two is to four is done manually. Um, this was what we used for the decking of the manhole. If you are wondering if they're going to get it right with what they are doing, I think it's, it's fair because when I started with them, I didn't trust that they would be able to get it right. So what I used to do with them is to make sure they measure the sand with the whole barrel, pour it before mixing. But over time, I noticed that they are good at what they do. They are able to just gauge with their eyes and they always get it right. So as you watch, you'll see that they're going to have it right. These stones were uh, three quarter stones, so I had to do one is to two is to three. So for the four bags, we had to use I think 13 row barrels or stones. So let's look at the total cost for the second floor block work and the last floor decking. So as always already sorted. So the total cost for the second floor block work and the last floor decking, that's the rooftop garden decking, is almost 70000 which should be about $12,000. The reason why this also was a little bit higher than the previous one is because the prices had gone up. So when we posted the fifth episode, 
and I showed you the, the current the state of the project as at September 2020 someone was wanted to know how much we had spent at that point we had spent about 450,000 Ghana cities thereabout which should be about 100 and sorry which should be about $85,000 now this is exclusive of the cost of the land unfortunately I'm unable to provide the cost of the land because of the privacy of the seller of the land but then in episode 1 I gave you a fair idea how much land should cost within the city and outside the city so if you want to have a fair idea how much it is just check it out okay so uh, for our bonus discussion we have multiple of issues to discuss today we are looking at how to create the excel template we'll be looking at the tools i use for the design of my templates or the 3d modeling and then we would also look at um, communication basically on the channel okay so based on the request by p Erbin, I hope I got the name right. I decided to um, show us how to create a template. And if after showing you, you still want me to send you mine, that should be no problem. I would um, definitely send it to you once you drop me an email. So let's get going. Okay, so the advantage of keeping records on the computer or in an excel sheet is if you keep the records this way you can also easily see the cost of various items so for instance if i want to check how much stones are bought over the period i just need to look for stones if you have a this is an old PC dedicated just for the channel so bear with me if you have a newer if you have a, a more modern PC you can easily type in here whatever you want to type and then it will start coming up but this one I have to scroll down because I'm using um, Office 2007 so you will notice that I have stones here so there we go so so far I've bought 15,000 cities worth of stones again you can easily check workmanship so if I check before I was capturing the workmanship differently but at the point I started capturing everything as workmanship and then I put the I put in the description what exactly it's for so you just need to be consistent so workmanship It's about 108,630. 108, that should be about $20,000. So, this is the advantage. I'm just showing you this so that you would appreciate why it could be useful to have the Excel template. So, once you have your Excel sheet, it's just a matter of formatting the cell. So, I put the date here, put item. And then I put in here unit cost and then quantity and then total and the description so you can resize the Cells. You just need to put the cursor here once it changes to this. And then this place, you're going to type equal to. Then you do this. You click here, and then you press the multiplication sign, and then times this. Then you press the you press the side two. Then you hit enter on your keyboard. 
so this is the enter on your keyboard so once that is done you can click and drag to whichever point you want so let's give you an example so for instance you come here cement one is about 38 cities now and then you buy the 27 then you bought iron rods But iron rods one ton and it's as in five thousand and then you bought two and a half tons 2.5 so there you have it and then here you just put in a brief a brief description of what it is so you just say uh, for for blocks yeah maybe for pillars So that is it, it's pretty simple. With that, the next thing that I will show you is the tools I used for the design because many of you are asking if I designed the building myself. So yes, and these are free tools. So first I used Floor Planner and then later I discovered SketchUp which you'll see in a bit. So the idea was to have two of these one like facing each other with a parking space in the middle as you can see so that way you have three bedrooms at the right and three bedrooms to the left so this was the first design which my wife said she didn't like so the concept i came up with i put the visitors washroom here of course i'm not an architect so so first I sent him this and then he came back with his design, he moved this to under the washroom which makes lots of sense so no matter what you are doing, you still need a professional expertise coming in because the staircase all this place would have gone away so he decided to move the staircase forward a little bit and then he put in this washroom down here which made, uh, which made a lot of sense so you can check out episode 1 for the various templates that he sent until the one that I agreed on and then I discovered the SketchUp which allowed me to play with the, my building design so basically this was my this was our initial model the idea was to have a roof a flat roof and then we would have this place more as a penthouse so we will be we will occupy this level and then we'll have this place as a private rooftop garden while the tenants are down here so that we, we have our privacy but that change as you will see soon this I try to check how it will look if I were to put a roof a roofing sheet in the middle here but that change I decided to go with concrete and then here i thought of putting a getting a place for air conditions for the two bedroom rather than having them on the wall and um, because i saw a building with like that which i think was cool so i was able to come up with a concept like this so now that is what is being done and since this was done i just decided to extend the cantilever up to this point and then let's check the other one like I indicated I decided to settle on a concrete roof and the reason is to be able to have water tanks at the top now uh, you need to realize that you cannot just modify it you need to take into consideration the structure of the building now the foundation was designed to be able to hold four stories the tanks here is, are going with 1,800 liters each. You can't put 5,000 or 4,000 liters at one side. The weight needs to be distributed. So I'm having I'm going to have 1,800, 1,800, 1,800. I currently have one. So that everything was drawn to scale because I'm modeling. I need to make sure that what is on the ground is what I'm actually working with. So you can see the dimension here. So the whole plot, 
as you can see it's 100 by 70 but you will definitely not have it exactly 100 because of the road and the walls and so on so it's about 96 as you can see and from here to here it's um, about 68 instead of the 70 so these are things that you definitely encounter in reality so people um, this is it if you want to give it a shot just check it out it's pretty easy to use with okay so uh, some of you contacted me for uh, steel bender and carpenter I want to just make a point here if we give out the numbers what it means is that we are all going to be disadvantaged and this is my reason if you if everyone starts calling them demanding the principle of demand and supply will kick in once they have so many people calling them they are going to increase the price for me they are going to increase the price for you also plus they are going to start misbehaving because they're going to take part of the money from you won't finish your job and because another person calls them they're going to take from the other that is why i usually uh, indicate that it's better they finish the current job and then i'll give you the number so that you can contact them that way we are all protected otherwise the purpose for which i'm even giving you the contact will be defeated the other thing i want to touch on is um contact or communication with us um, i noticed that many of you keep asking for ways to reach us i was referring many of you to the about session mainly because i'm usually using a um, pc but apparently it doesn't the contact doesn't always show when you are on your phone so um, apologies henceforth i will have the contact at the end of the video so the email address will be at the end of the video the reason why i wasn't posting it is to avoid spam so with a video at least you uh, malware cannot easily retrieve the email address from the video so it, it's definitely going to be human beings who will see it and then if necessary will contact us and finally we appreciate you taking time to leave a comment for us we do read all comments and i could particularly identify with the comment about um, about waiting to pop champagne once the project is complete thanks for all the comments we smile at some of them and um, the only thing is for obvious reason we wouldn't be able to respond to all comments that said if you need a response from us please put the comments in a question form that way you can be 100 percent sure you would get a response from us because we answer all questions and again to protect us from spam or from inappropriate sites we have disabled the option of posting any link related comments that is emails uh, websites so if you put in an email in a comment or a website we are not going to see it and we usually delete all those without having to go through them so please don't put in, in emails websites in your comments because it's, it's not going to show for us to see them okay so people that is it for this episode in episode 7 which should be released within the next two weeks we will look at the the rooftop garden that's the block work for the rooftop garden the seating area for the rooftop garden my small two room and of course we'll also look at the story tank area as well if you have any questions feel free to post them in the comment section i do answer all questions every sunday so thank you for watching see you in a bit enjoy